Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be talking about Ironfish and how it looks like they may be switching algorithms. It looks like they may be switching to something that is ASIC resistant, which is awesome, awesome news for us GPU miners. Right, so we're going to talk about why this discussion is happening, what's been going on, and what things are looking like, right? What clues are giving us and why we're even talking about this, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. So let's start off by looking at the price, which has been horrible, right? Price action wise, again, it's kind of like what we had talked about. I know when I had first mentioned it back when it was going live, some of you guys were asking, hey, is it worth, you know, buying right now? The answer I gave is no, right? Any of these VC coins, this is what happens every time, right? It's one thing if it's a brand new mining coin where there's no pre-mine, there's no VC money, then it's more fair. Yield will be there, et cetera, et cetera. This is a VC coin, right? So I made that crystal clear that that's part of the reason I'm interested in it, but that's also the reason that this is 100% going to happen. And it did, right? If you guys remember on that first day on like safe trade, it was like 14, 15 bucks, which wasn't realistic. Realistically, once it hit KuCoin or once it hit the exchanges, it was like at $8, $8.50 and just gradually went all the way down, right? It's currently down to 81 cents. Hopefully you guys, you know, paid attention and did not buy at that point. So is it at the low? Maybe, maybe not. Can it go lower? Sure, right? So it can go down to 50 cents, 40 cents, 20 cents. Who knows, right? But if you're interested in it, it's when I started DCing into it. Once it hit like 95 cents, that dollar range, I did buy a little bit. Once it hit 75 cents, may buy a little bit more. We'll see how the price action goes and how just... Everything goes overall, right? I'm not trying to shill it on you, I'm not trying to promote Ironfish. This is more about just having another GPU mineable option, right? So just talking to giving a little overview there. But let's talk about what's going on with it and why they're even having this conversation, right? So right off the rip, right when it first started, I don't know if any of you guys remember, but Hero Miners was the dominant pool, right? It pretty much took all the hash rate right from the get-go and they were hitting all the blocks. So that's where everybody kind of remained, right? And it kind of just stayed that way. Things didn't really switch. Hero Miners was dominant. People weren't really switching around. But then this current issue is probably the real reason that they're really, really considering this now is that if we look at the block distribution chart, look at the unknown, right? It's at 65%. That's crazy. And it's been steadily growing. It was like at 48, then 49, 51, 55. It's at freaking 65% and it's still growing. This is the thing is that it's still continuing to go up. Because again, the price is going down. So a lot of the GPUs just keep switching algorithms, right? Just because it's of the unknown hash rate. So we this does not necessarily mean that it's like one entity has 65% of the network. It's just solo miners, right? What's likely, my personal guess, is that it's probably quite a few large FPGA farms, right? Whether or not it's FPGAs or ASICs is almost irrelevant, but it is does seem like it. there are quite a few big entities that do have a big chunk of that 65%. Reason I'm saying that is we did get a little hint back a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a significant dip on CASPA. Pay attention to this date, right? So it's June 26th. We line it up as June 26th. They had a pretty significant dip all at once for a couple hours. It wasn't something that was extended, but it definitely appeared to be like a farm going down, right? We were thinking, oh, maybe it's ice rivers unplugging, things of that sort, which is possible, right? But to me, most likely, my personal guess is that it was an FPGA farm, right? We know that there was a lot of FPGAs that were still on CASPA at the time, because again, this was prior to this hash rate increase we just had, and it was fairly profitable still, right? So going through other coins, the one I was able to find that was also affected was Ironfish. Again, look at the date, June 26, they had a huge dip in their hash rate, right? So most likely maybe this farm was doing maintenance, they had an outage of some sort, but to me, that's my personal guess. It just seemed funny that the dates lined up exactly and it was a huge dip on both. Both of them are FPGA mineable. So that's why I'm coming to that conclusion. Could it be something else? Sure, but 
looking at the evidence, that's what it points to, to me. This one, though, was a much bigger deal with Ironfish because it was such a big chunk of the overall hash rate, right? So you can see here, it was in like the around the two peta hash range. It dropped down to about 800 tera hash, right? So almost two thirds of the hash rate went down all at once, okay? You do not want that. That's insane, right? So again, it was only a small period of time. This is not something you want to see, right? And the scary part is that just every day, because I've been following this pretty closely, it's just been going up, right? So it's a 65%. It's going to keep going up, right? Especially as this iron price goes down and it becomes less and less profitable, the few GPUs that are on there are going to be unplugging, right? Because as we know, pretty much day one, FPGAs were on here, right? And you guys with those Ospreys, anything that can use Team Red Miner, even the molt miners, right? The molt miner M2s. Although the bitstream isn't publicly available, uh, we definitely know that they have it, right? Because if you know if you have a molt miner, you're mining on hash pool because that's the pool that it's kind of like assigned to. And if you look, it's currently the number five pool and they have almost 25 Terra hash on there, right? So is it them just testing it? They're doing whatever, who knows? But that bitstream is coming, right? So it is going to add more hash, so that it is a good thing. But if we look at GPUs, right? So this is with 3070s. This is at a 10 cent kilowatt hour. It is not even profitable, right? So because of that, let's go down and see how far down on the list it is, right? We got to go all the way down. Alephium is more profitable. Ergo is more profitable. Caspa is more profitable. Fero is more profitable. Ravencoin is more profitable. Kyla Coin is more profitable. Flux is more profitable. We gotta go all the way down here to find Ironfish, and it's at a seven cent a day loss or a five cent a day loss, right? So to me, that's saying that the majority is all FPGAs already, right? So it never even got really made it to the GPUs, and that's a huge disadvantage because one of the beautiful things with GPU mining is the community aspect that you get from it, right? The beauty with it is that it's decentralized. It's easy for anybody to join because you don't need really specialized hardware, right? Anybody with any GPU can jump in, and especially when it's early, they're trying to build that hash rate. So typically we get, you know, a few months, six months, a year for everybody to participate, join the network, learn more about it and accumulate coins, right? So therefore, so once things start picking up, people are more likely to participate in the network because like, oh, okay, I got some iron. Let me do something with it, right? They kind of didn't get that. It went straight to FPGAs and FPAs just dumping, right? And this is most likely also the reason for all this. They're mining everything they can and just dumping it, right? So now let's go to why we're saying that they're gonna do this, right? So they did have a monthly pulse today. I didn't get to listen to it, but I was going through the comments and I found the answer to the concern I had. And this is the concern. If you've been in the Discord, this has pretty much been the main concern, right? So in past interviews, right right from the beginning, they were talking about it. They were saying at this time, you know, we were committed to Blake 3, but then more recently, they were kind of changing their tune a little bit that they'll leave it more to the community. And now uh, they definitely are. Right. And now they've been seeing things progress and things kind of slowly getting worse because for whatever reason, they became like the poster child for FPGA and then ASIC mining. Right. There have been rumors that Bitmain was, you know, in one of their one of their either Twitter spaces or one of their discord things or whatever that somebody from Bitmain was asking. Could it be true? Yes. But I mean, that's typically not something they're going to ask on a public forum. Right. For them to invest and that they're not going to talk to them on a public forum and get confirmation there. And, okay, let me put these $2 million to get these wafers in. No, they're going to, like, talk to the team. They're going to do it in private channels and do it that way. So that was kind of weird anyway. But let's get to the comment, right? So this is from today. This is from the post they had today. This is Elena of Ironfish, who's the head person. So we'll be starting a discourse thread around what hashing algorithm to switch to, not to possibly switch to, but to switch to. We are committed to switching the algorithm. We believe it's important to protect GPU miners and discourage ASICs, right? 
So it's a pretty clear statement that they are going to be committed to it, that they are going to do it. The way they are most likely going to do it is they're going to go through what their discourse is, right? So this is going to be like the, how they do their governance proposals. So if you go on their website, ironfish.network, go to community, go to governance. And currently the way they have it set up, it's kind of like a forum board cor currently, right? So they haven't put up that proposal yet. They just talked about it today. So give it a couple of days, but they will put it here. They will put it up for discussion and put your input guys. If you are a GPU miner, whether you like Ironfish or not, is irrelevant. You want all the options available to us that we can, right? So as soon as this goes up, please put in your input guys. Again, whether you like Ironfish or not, it's about GPU mining and having more options. Um, so I'm sure they're gonna talk about what algorithm to switch to, right? So just because they're switching algorithms doesn't mean it's gonna be ASIC proof, right? We want it to at least be ASIC resistant, meaning most likely a more memory intensive algorithm. So think things like Kapow, Zellhash, Autolycos, Maybe they create a different one, which I doubt it. They'll probably just use one that's already there just so it'll be a quicker, easier transition. Um, so when that does go up, we'll see what they put. Hopefully it's not Kapow because the thing runs hot as hell, but um, we'll see what they do. But the fact that they are doing something about it, that they are putting it up to the community, to me is bullish, right? It means they are listening to the community. They're looking at concerns and they're looking at fixing it, right? So pretty cool there. So as soon as they do put something up, I will be trying to put it out. If any of you bigger YouTubers happen to catch this video, please also put that out once that information becomes available. Because again, this affects all GPU miners. Okay, again, to reiterate, whether or not you're into Ironfish or you care about Ironfish or you want to mine Ironfish, irrelevant. You just want all the options we can. Because again, come the bull market in a year and a half, we may not have too many options, right? Again, I've been harping on this for the past few months. There's not too many that are fully committed to GPU mining, right? A lot of these newer coins, i.e. Radiant, Nexa, they're not necessarily committed to GPU mining. They're going to go that FPGA and ASIC route. And the way it's going now, it's like FPGAs are becoming way more prevalent. A lot of them are essentially going FPGA and then ASIC. Right, so we saw that when Ironfish, we saw it actually right now with Kyla Coin. I don't know why they happen to pick Kyla Coin to be the next one, but that one's already available for the E300s. It's been available for like the FK33s and such, but that may be a route that a lot of them tend to go, right? So the fact that one is openly committing to GPU mining, it's a pretty big deal, right? Because essentially, it's pretty much just like Dynex, Flux, Ergo. So pretty much the only ones that have openly committed to being GPU mineable, right? So again, more options is always good. Another thing to consider is that if this goes well, this gets a lot of engagement, maybe it'll have other coins reconsider their timeline, reconsider the route that they are going, right? Because in reality, guys, a ton of GPUs are out there ready to secure these networks, right? So it does seem kind of silly that they're so willing to go right to FPGA and ASIC when there is so much security available, right? So if any of these others were to also commit, I'm sure they'll get a lot of GPUs on there as well, right? So things like Radiant or like Nexa is a perfect example because again, for them to go that route, they're gonna have to hard fork and switch the algorithm, right? So maybe they decide to change that. Maybe like, okay, there's a ton of hash available. There's a lot of GPU miners. Maybe we'll stay with GPU miners, right? So depending on the outcome here, it can affect other things, right? So these are the things we wanna pay attention to, we wanna be involved in. So again, if any of you bigger YouTubers are watching or anybody guys, if any of you guys have big Twitter accounts, a lot of you guys have huge Twitter accounts and don't even, don't really create content aside from that, put that out there once this becomes available, right? Cause again, this is something that is gonna benefit all of us and it's good for everybody, right? So again, guys, just wanted to make you aware of what's going on there. And as it is something good, again, I, even if you're not into it, it is good for GPU miners, good for decentralization. It's good overall, right? We'll see what Ironfish does in the future. Again, realistically, as far as like price action goes, 
they probably won't have anything until towards the end of the year when hopefully their ETH bridge goes live, right? That's kind of the timeline right now. It's potentially that one of their bridges may possibly be done by the end of the year. The one I'd be the most bullish on is ETH. The next would be BTC ETH because of DeFi, right? As soon as they create that bridge, that opens up a whole new world, a ton of use cases and just being able to participate in DeFi, right? bridges and then even being able to trade it easier think dexes things of that sort so something to consider there um but yeah guys just wanted to give you that update especially for all you gpu miners again please help us out put the word out once we do have more information let me know what you're thinking guys right do you think this is a good move do you think they'd rather go down do you think you don't give a crap about ironfish you hope it goes to zero because it's vc backed let me know in the comments right um, so again, guys, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys, and I am out.